Hello everyone, I cordially welcome you all to another video from the Python tutorial series and in this video we are going to discuss about functions in Python. So without any delay, let's get started. Functions in Python are basically a block of code which gets executed when it is invoked. In general, functions are used to separate the logic and implementation. For instance, we mainly use functions in a code to redo a specific task which has to be done in a piece of code again and again. This helps to increase the usability of our code. Okay? If you have any knowledge about any other programming language, you will know that functions do exist in all sorts of programming. Okay? Be it Java, be it C, be it C++, be it JavaScript, in all the programming languages, you will find the concept for function. And why functions are an essential part in any programming language? The reason is, as I have said in this presentation, functions allow us to reuse a piece of code. Suppose there is 2000 line of code and after line number 500, there are five statements that needs to be executed and those statements exactly needs to be executed again after line number 1000, again after line number 1500 and again at the end. Okay. So will you write these five lines of code again and again five times? No. What we generally do, we separate those five statements in a different block. Okay. And we basically call that block from where it needs to be executed. So basically what will happen is when the control will iterate on our code, when it will see that the function has been called, the control will go there, execute those lines of code and again will come back to our main code. Okay. And this concept of functions helps us to write code that is reusable, saving our time and effort. And also it helps us to write testable code. Okay. So if you write any code which has got functions, so you will find the unit testing of these functions is pretty easy. Okay. Let's proceed. What are arguments? Arguments are nothing but some extra information passed to the function body for process. We specify this extra piece of information within the pair of parentheses which follows the function name and separate each of the information from other using commas. We can specify as many arguments as needed in the function. It has to be noted that for this case or simple cases like this, the number of arguments passed has to be same with the number of parameters declared within the function definition. Else there will be an error. Okay. So why do we need arguments in functions? Sometimes functions will not directly perform some task. They will need some data which needs to be processed and then depending on the data received, they will return some value. So how will you send those data to the functions? In those scenarios, arguments are helpful. Basically arguments helps us to pass data to the functions which can then be processed. Okay. And number of parameters defined in the function should be exactly same with the number of arguments passed to the function. Okay. If you are a little confused as of now, don't worry. Soon we are going to do some hands-on and that will clarify your concept. Okay. Let's proceed. What are args? Add the asterisk before the parameter name in the function specification if you are unsure of the number of arguments that will be given to your function. Okay. The function will then receive a tuple of parameters and be able to retrieve the elements as necessary. Now consider an example. In a function, you know you will receive a number of arguments, but you are not sure how many arguments will be passed. But your function is written in such a way that depending on the number of arguments passed, you will return a value and the process which gets executed in the function is independent of the number of arguments passed. If one argument is passed, the function will execute. If 100 arguments are passed, still also the function will execute. In those scenarios, it is quite obvious that you will not write 100 arguments altogether with a different name. So in those cases, we use asterisk args basically to receive all the arguments in a form of tuple and then within our function body, we can directly use it. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. What are quarks? So before the parameter name in the function definition, add two asterisk. 
if you are unsure of the number of keyword arguments that will be provided into your function. By receiving a dictionary of parameters in this manner, the function will be able to access the elements in the proper way. Okay. So what are quarks? In case of quarks, the argument is received in the form of a dictionary. Unlike arcs where the arguments are received in a form of tuple. And basically you can use these arguments in the function body to do some task and then finally return an output. Okay. We have discussed enough of theory as of now. Let's go to the code and understand by doing some example. Welcome to VS Code. Here we have a lot of examples which will clarify your concept about functions in Python. So let's consider with the first example. In the first example, we are going to discuss how basic functions work. So functions in Python have some way to be written. Every function should start with a def keyword, def, basically an abbreviation for definition. Thereafter, you have the function name followed by a pair of parentheses. Okay. And as I have said in Python, we don't use braces to define scope. We simply use indentation. So after parenthesis, we will have colon and thereafter we will write our code in this indented manner. And finally, we will call this function from within the main code. Okay. So what will happen when this code will execute, the control will come here. It will execute grid. So it will see that grid is a function. So the control will go here and finally this print statement will execute and the control will come back in our main code. Okay. So what we are going to see, we will see hello everyone in the terminal. So let's run the code and check if it is working. So I will write python 18.py and as you can see here it is showing hello everyone. Okay. Let's go to the next example. In the next example, we are going to learn how arguments can be passed to a function. So basically, rather than calling a function directly, we can pass any argument. Okay. And this argument will be received within this pair of parentheses. And finally, we can access these arguments directly within our function by their name. Here, what will happen? Here, we will call greet John. So when this greet John will be called, this data will be passed over here in the name. Now within this function, this name variable will store John. So wherever you call name, it will show John. So here when we will run this code, we will see hello John. Let's run this code and see if what we are discussing is correct or not. So as you can see here, we are saying hello John. Okay. So this is how we can pass arguments to the function. Let's go to the next example. In the next example, we are going to learn about default arguments. Sometimes it might so happen that you want to define a function such that it might receive any argument or it might not receive any argument. In such scenarios, you have to set a default value of the parameter. Okay. Here John is the argument that we are passing and name is the parameter which gets the value of this argument. So here what will happen? We have specified name equal to user. So we have assigned a default value to this parameter. Why we have done so? What will happen is when we will call greet with John as an argument, the value of name which is user will be replaced by name equal to John and when this print statement will execute, we will see hello John. Okay. But in case we don't pass any argument, the default value for this name will be user and we will see hello user over here. Okay. Let's run this code and see if that is working. So as you can see in my terminal that whenever we are passing John as an argument, we are seeing hello John. But when we are not passing any argument, we are utilizing the default value and hence we are saying hello user. Let's go to the next example. In this example, we will see how we can use this star ARGS. So one thing which you should take a note of 
this ARGS is not a keyword in Python. Okay. So rather than writing ARGS, you can write any name over here. But one key note is this parameter will be preceded by an asterisk. That is the rule. Here we are passing three names, John, Daniel, and Boss. And these names will be utilized in our function body. How? We will iterate over this name and say hello to each one of them. But here I am not sure how many names will be passed. It is possible only one name will be passed. It is possible even 20 names can be passed. Okay. And if one name is passed, this name will be of type string. But when a lot of names will be passed, it will be either of type list or tuple. So how can I write this function in a very efficient way? We can use this ARGS concept. What will happen when these names will be passed, this name parameter will receive these names in a form of tuple. And finally, we can iterate over this tuple and print this statement. Basically, we will print hello John, hello Daniel and hello boss in the terminal. Let's run the code and see what we are telling is correct or not. So as you can see on my screen, we are printing hello John, hello Daniel and hello boss. And all these names are passed to this name parameter in a form of tuple. If I uncomment this statement and execute the code again, you will see John, Daniel and Bose are within a pair of parentheses. So this data is received by this function in a form of tuple. Okay. And this is really very helpful when you are not sure how many number of arguments will be passed, but you want to write an efficient function such that if one argument is passed, this function will execute. If 2000 arguments are passed, still also this function will execute. Okay. Now let's understand the last example for today's video. In this example, we are going to understand how double asterisk quarks work. So basically, as I have said, single asterisks are used to receive the arguments in the form of tuples. Similarly, double asterisk is used to receive the arguments in a form of dictionaries. So if you are not sure what are dictionaries, dictionaries are basically key value pairs in Python. So here when we will pass greet first name John, last name Do, and age is 34, this name parameter will receive these three arguments in a form of dictionary. That it will be a dictionary where key is first name, value is John. Key is last name, value is do. Key is age, value is 34. Let's execute this code. That will actually help you to understand this better. So if I run this code, you will see it is a dictionary that is within a pair of curly braces and we have key value pairs. So first name, last name and age are the keys and John, do and 34 are the respective values. Okay. So that's all for the example and I hope you have understood how we write functions in Python, what is the necessity of arguments and how do we pass arguments, how we can write default arguments in Python, how args and quarks helps us to write efficient functions when we are not sure what kind of data we will receive in the form of arguments. Okay, let's go back to our presentation. I hope you found this video informative. If you have any doubt, I will post the link of our blog in the description section below. You can go and check it out. And in case you really like this video and you think this video has helped you, please feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel as that will greatly motivate us. For any queries, doubts, suggestions or feedbacks, feel free to post them in the comment section. We are going to reply. So thank you for now. See you in the next video. Bye.